On our third day in Abusan, we started out by going to Atelier A2, which is um, a spot right in the center of Abusan, uh, a workshop run by France Odile Perrine Crenier. And uh, this was a really fun uh, visit. She had a student weaving in her front room and then two people weaving in the back on a commission. They were weaving flat out as fast as they could to get this thing done for a deadline later this summer. The next studio we visited in Abusan was that of Nadia Petkovic. It's called Atelier de la Lune. And um, it was really fun to be able to spend time with Nadia while we were in Abusan. She helped us out a lot throughout the whole visit. She helped us with translation and getting in touch with some people that um, we wanted to see. And uh, it was really wonderful to hear her interpretation of a lot of the different um, places we were going and her knowledge about what goes on in tapestry in Abu San. Nadia obviously runs her own studio where she has won commissions and is working on um, a very large piece at the moment. And um, right now she has one other person working with her in the studio so that she can meet her deadline. Though she's a master of traditional tapestry in the Abusan style, she also does a lot of experimenting and had some really amazing samples to show us of some of her other work um, that she's done with artists all over the world. Nadia introduced us later that day to Jean-Marie Dor, who runs um, a business selling tapestries, but also he has a conservation business. It was really amazing to see um, one of his conservators working on a piece, and then he has a huge room with um, two big tubs where he uh, will actually wash tapestries. So they use, uh, he's working with a dryer um, to have really a precise color, yeah. that's why. So it's not the same yarn and not the same um, way to dye. Yeah. Yeah. The last place that Nadia took us this day was the dye studio of Rajar Theory. The casual way that these powdered dyes were treated both here and at the Goblon uh, dye manufacturing was just a little bit shocking to me. I don't actually think that this is safe because these powders are so fine that they are probably airborne and they're probably being uh, breathed in. But this is how it's done. This man supplies most of the tapestry yarn used in this region of the country, which is pretty amazing considering what a small one-man operation this is. I might have gone home with a little yarn.